The galaxy is full of stars, but where do they come from and how are they actually born? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Science of Elite with Down to Earth Astronomy. Over the next couple of videos in this series, I'm going to be talking about um, how stars are formed, how solar systems are formed and how stars die. And that's probably going to be three videos, I guess. But in this video, I'm going to focus on the formation of stars. What actually happens? How are stars actually born? When we look at star formation, we first of all need to have a look at all these gas clouds that are scattered around the galaxy. We can actually see them in Elite Dangerous if we, uh, if we go into the galaxy map. And these are called the interstellar medium. These are gas clouds just sitting there in a, in a stable-ish position. We, we have two main forces right now that, that's keeping these clouds uh, in balance. We have the, um, the gravity trying to pull the gas cloud uh, in and try to make it collapse. And we have the gas pressure trying to push it out and, uh, and force this thing to, um, to expand and, and, and disperse. And these two kind of battle each other and they find some kind of uh, equilibrium it's called hydrostatic equilibrium. And the cloud just sitting there on its own, not really doing a lot, it's kind of boring. But it is, as I said, it's stable-ish. A relatively small um, small disturbance can cause these to go into an uncontrollable collapse or a cascade collapse where gravity takes over and just will be to collapse, collapse, and just collapse faster and faster and faster. Um, so these disturbances... They can come from various sources. Um, it can be supernovas. If a supernova grew off in the local area, it's a violent enough event that it can actually do cause a spike in star formation um, in that area. Um, also, the galaxy arms can make these disturbances. If you imagine, if you have been to a concert or any other event where they uh, where they have these smoke mach machines that they kind of fill the room with smoke. If you like wipe your arm through the uh, through the smoke, you will see it all kind of swirls and all kind of stuff. And even though the galaxy arms are not actually solid objects, it is a higher concentration of um, of mass in that area that's that's moving through these uh, gas clouds, and it kind of causes the same effect, um, destabilizing the gas. And we're beginning this um, uh, this uh, uh, collapse where gravity begins to take over and uh, it begins to uh, to collapse. And we can actually see this in, in real life galaxies. And um, I'm going to show you a picture here in a bit. And before we do that, though, uh, you need to know that um, blue stars, the big blue stars, they're very bright. Um, they send out a ton of light, but they have a very, very short life. So blue stars, very big, very violent, very short life. Um, so often they are nicknamed the rock stars. And um, then you have the smaller reddish stars they have a longer life and more quiet take it easy kind of kind of lifestyle and this is important because if we look at this picture here which is of a galaxy called uh, m51 i think yeah m51 um i'm sure it have a more like popular name but the catalog name is misa 51 so if you look at this galaxy here, we can see that along the galaxy arms, we have all these bright blue stars. Now, keep in mind, I don't know, if you find other pictures of this, it will probably be more red or more blue. That's because for some reason, colors are always off when you take pictures like this because they're taken at at separate, um, that like the colors are spread out into the RGB components and then later there they're combined. And depending on how much people, they um, they intensify the different, uh, different bands, it can... It can give various colors, but that's not the topic of today's, um, today's uh, video. But you can see here along the galaxy arms, we have all these bright stars. This is all the stars where uh, stars are formed because Mesa 51 is a very, very active galaxy. There's a lot of star formation going on here, as you can see. Lots and lots of new stars being born. And they are all kind of been born here um, in or close to the galaxy arms as it's moving through the gas. That's actually also why you would... Often, I, and I haven't actually tested if that's the case in League, but often you would, uh, in reality, you would see more red and brown dwarfs if you go into the uh, area between the galaxy arms because, because the blue stars, they die so quickly, they don't really have time to move that far away from the galaxy arms before they die and go over or whatever they, they end up doing, depending on their mass. We'll talk about that in a future video. Um, but you should, if you go into the, to the area between the arms, you should begin to, to see more brown dwarfs um, and more red stars and not that many 
um, blue, uh, big blue stars, not that many black holes, not that many um, uh, white dwarfs or neutron stars and stuff like that. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at a, a cloud. I'm going to try to follow the cloud from just being there and, and it's just been disturbed and something has caused this, um, this runaway uh, collapse to start. And as I said, originally we have two forces. We have the gas pressure inside the star, inside the uh, the gas cloud, trying to push it out, and we have gravity trying to pull it in. But because of this disturbance, gravity has now suddenly taken over and is beginning to to win this fight, and it is collapsing, and it's be collapsing and becomes smaller uh, and smaller and smaller. And when you collapse a gas, it heats up. Um, same reason why if you have anything in an, in, in a, in an aerosol can and you spray it out, it can feel cold or you will see it begin to freeze up if you have something that's been under high pressure that's suddenly released. That's the opposite effect, that you have something that's under high pressure and you put it very quickly under a smaller pressure, then it, the gas cools down, it becomes cold. It's not because it's cold inside the canister. Um, that is of, uh, obviously room temperature. But we have the opposite effect here. When you have something that is very big, uh, gas-wise, and you put it suddenly under a lot of pressure, gas pressure, it heats up. So this happens here, the, star, the, the gas begins to, to collapse and becomes denser and denser and denser and denser and denser, until it, the core of this, um, of this gas cloud gets so hot that, um, that hydrogen fusion can begin. And as soon as we have hydrogen fusion, then we have what is known as a proto star. Now, I'm going to take this a little step further and I might begin to cover kind of some of the things I wanted to actually cover in the next video about planet formation. But this is how the disk, the, and originally it's, we still have this gas cloud and we have what's known as the proto star in the middle. We still have material falling into the star. The star is still accumulating more mass. But now we suddenly have a new player who joined the field. So far, this has only been controlled by gas pressure and gravity. And gravity was really winning this fight. But now that we have the hydrogen fusion process, we suddenly get a radiation pressure. This pressure is basically just photons. It's just light. And the and other particles formed inside the, inside the core of the star, the fusion process being flung out at very high speeds. And that is, of course, adding an additional radiation pressure outwards that is helping the gas pressure counteract the gravitation. And at some point, all these three forces are going to find some kind of equilibrium and then once again back in the hydrostatic equilibrium and we have a fully formed star. Now, I want to add a brief mention about the rotation of a star because where does this rotation come from? We know the star rotates, we can, we can see it, we can observe our own sun, we can see it rotate. So why, why does that happen? Now, when the gas clouds were sitting there undisturbed, it wasn't just sitting there completely still it would most likely been, have been rotating very slowly and it might have been imperceivably slow, but it was very big and it was turning ever so slowly. But just as if with a, uh, let's, say a let's say a figure skater, or if you've ever as a kid, if you got a swing and you like twisted it around and you would then sit and it would turn you around and around and around. If you pulled your legs out, you would turn slower. And if you pulled your legs in under you, or you did it with your arms out, then you would turn slower, you pull your arms in close to your body, it would be um, it would be faster. It's the same thing you see if you look at figure skaters. If they are spinning around themselves uh, with their arms out, they spin slowly, and then they pull their arms in and they speed up. Same thing happens here. So we have this big cloud turning ever so slowly. But as it begins to collapse, that's the equivalent of the figure skater pulling her arms in, the gas cloud begins to spin faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Um, kind of the same effect we see when, uh, when we have uh, neutron stars spinning so damn quickly. It's because they were once a big star and now they've been shrunk down to a very small object and that have increased their, uh, their rotation speed. And that's where the whole rotation comes from. And that's going to be important when we move on and talk about, um, we talk about planet formation uh, in the next video. But for now at least, we have arrived at the very early stages of a solar system. We have formed a star in the middle and around it we have a spinning gas cloud and we're going to continue from there next time and see how that gas clouds then form into planets and we're going to talk about why the um, the rocky planets are always close to the star the gas giants are far away why do planets always end up in a in a plane around the star 
and how can you spot the difference between a planet that was formed together with the uh, with the solar system or a planet that was captured maybe something that was flung out of a dying star in in uh, so that was had happened to fly by and was captured into the orbit of the star all that i'm going to cover in the next um, video in the science of elite and i hope you'll join me and if you want to have uh, have that go down click that like button click that subscribe button and until next time i hope i'll see you guys in space